stand up and for everybody to give them applause and love and attention. Imagine a job where every day you listen to folks talk through a crisis and you help them find the resources. You keep a level head and you find a path for them to feel secure and confident that they can take care of their families. This is what these folks do every day and it's not easy. We appreciate their commitment to our community and if in any way you can take a moment, there's, uh, you'll see on your table tent, you can, with the QR code, you can do a little thank you to them yourselves because I imagine a lot of you work with organizations where these folks have been in touch with resources Resources, or maybe you've thought about how to help somebody get in touch with 211. These are the folks they talk to. So please, please take a moment there to thank them today. We appreciate that opportunity. So this week is very special. Now, um, 211, we call it the United Way National Holiday. It does fall on the same day as the Super Bowl. So Taylor was busy, and we were hoping she could be here, but you know. That being said, uh, we did sort of spread it out over a week. Um, so as you know today, thank you for being at the celebratory breakfast where we really enjoy um, talking about our CRAs and the amazing things they do. And our sponsors, you know, having the presence of mind, these organizations really are committed to our community. And they put dollars behind these opportunities. So OI being our presenting sponsor, really appreciate them and the time that they give our community as well as the resources. UTMC, what a great partner they have been. They helped us with our food summit and with this breakfast today. Uh, we appreciate what UTMC does for us as a community and as an organization. Also, want to thank our friends at Hollywood Casino, Buckeye Broadband, and BCAN, all making this possible as well. This week wouldn't be there without them, so appreciate them. And then the chairs you're sitting in right now, thank you very much to the University of Toledo Rec Center for last night getting the chairs in here and taking care of that. Valerie Wallstrom is a very committed person when it comes to community excellence. <laughs> And so she got the good cookies and the chair, you know, so, and thank you, University of Toledo. This is a beautiful facility. We were just talking about how we can feature this tremendous partner time and time again, much like we did with the Food Summit over at the Medical Center here today, you know, on campus. So we look forward to more United Way events and coming together with this fantastic partner. Now, I want to talk a little bit about 211, and it's really st stunning to me that when I first took this job, and it was exactly six years ago, we had outsourced our 211 resources to Cleveland. As I learned more about 211 and what it could do, started thinking about how we bring it back. And I want to thank Chief Bird. We're going to hear from him in a minute. Uh, he's a retired fire chief. Brian Bird, he is on our board at United Way. And he and I started talking along with City Council Member Sandy Spang. She was then a City Council Member about what we could do. Now, the thing we were thinking back then was how do we reduce 911 call volume? They get a lot of strange calls. Of course, they, they have to respond to folks that are hurt or in need like that. But sometimes they get calls from folks who are running out of food or about to be evicted. That's a 211 problem, not a 911 problem. So we started down the path of bringing 211 back to our community, employing people in our community, and it made sense for when someone's in need here to talk to somebody from Toledo. So again, appreciate those community resources that are here now. Um, and when we brought it back, it was exactly four years ago, we were celebrating much like this. I've got pictures of Chief Bird and some of the gang, you know, and we were, it was an evening event. About a month later, the pandemic hit. And 211 felt like, how do I put this? It was sort of like a nice, steady Honda. We bought a new Honda Accord. It was going to be a good car, a steady car. So we bought our Honda Accord, brought 211 back, localized it. We knew we had a good car here, a brand new one. And then the pandemic hit. And I want to thank Jen Archer, is going to talk to you a little bit today. Jen and our 211 partners really getting meals out to folks. And we found that it was a great way for families to call in and get registered for meals. When we started to realize the success with that, that new car, I was sort of like, drive it like you stole it, Jill. Take it and run with it, because we've got a lot to do in community. We use that car to not only get people in touch with resources like food, but for Chromebooks for school, vaccinations. We, we, we vaccinated thousands of people using 211 Community Resource Advisors to help our older folks get through those registrations. You can imagine, if you don't have a computer or know how to use a computer, pretty hard to go online and get registered for a life-saving vaccine. So thank you, Community Resource Advisors. 
supervisors for doing that. Then we went through quite a housing crisis with inflation and other things. We had resources we needed people to be in touch with so they did not get evicted, so they stayed in their homes and had that stability. Continued through the inflation, we had a lot of folks needing to be in touch with food. Thank you again, community resource advisors. Now I'm watching this Honda get a lot faster and a lot faster and a lot faster, and at some point you realize we don't have a Honda, we have a Lamborghini in 211. So we're going to take the Lambo out after we hear from some of our folks today a little bit about how we go further and faster with 211 and make an impact in community. So I want to thank you all for supporting that. The stories that came from 211 that were inspiring to me in the beginning was uh, we had a, a lady who called, she was a victim of uh, domestic violence and was being followed and she couldn't quite figure out how to get out of that jam. It was actually a parish nurse that called to get her help. They found a tracker on her car, got the tracker off, got her a new phone, got her legal help to get away from the person that was dangerous, then getting her the help to get to her family so she could take her children to a safe place where she would be protected. See, that's the thing about community resource advisors. They don't think about just the problem that's in front of that person that they're seeing. How do you think through the solutions? How do you maybe get that person where they never have to call 211 again, and that's what we hope for, right? We want, we want this resource to be that kind of you know, I think gap filler for folks. Um, so that being said, well, we're going to talk a little more about these stories. Now we do get um, 73,000 73, calls in 2003 or 2023. It was in, uh, what was it, during the pandemic, Jill, over 100,000 calls. I mean, a lot of contacts. Um, and one of the things, this data, when we have these calls come in real time, right, on the ground, we learn about gaps in resources. That's one of the things 211 really helps us with, is data and information to figure out how to fill those gaps. Now, I want to call up Jen Archer, I think queen of all things food. She is now at UTMC, our tremendous partner, helping us with community resources. Jen made such an impact in our community, making sure children got fed during the pandemic, and we can't thank her enough for her will, her creativity, and her enthusiasm for all things community. Thank you, Joy. Yeah, the, the work that I did at United Way during the pandemic was kind of a wild ride. I always kind of, when I tell people about my time there and um, what we needed to do to really rally volunteers together, to come into the building, to build snack packs, to have volunteers out there kind of wearing their superhero cases, capes and um, serving meals to kids that were out of school. It was kind of cool because I was riding, I was driving a car on the highway by myself most days to get to the building because everybody else was told to stay home. But it was really amazing to see the way we were able to mobilize so many people to get out of their houses, to come serve with us, to do good things with us anyway. Um, and it just was a great opportunity. Um, you know, as Wendy said, I was at United Way during the pandemic and moved on to UTMC and I'm incredibly proud of being at UTMC right now. I love working for the university. I love the impact that we have on our patients and the great things that we can do for the community. Going back to school to get my MBA, so there's a lot of pride for the blue and gold here in Ohio and I love it. Um, but 211 really resonates differently with me. Um, seeing the work that they did during the pandemic and knowing that we could give folks access to food. You know, I have nieces that are that age that were displaced from school and food for them was so important. Um, my sister is Alice, um, considered Alice, which is asset limited, income constrained. And she's a single mom. She is battling breast cancer. She has twin girls that are now eight years old. And I can tell you from a personal standpoint the times that she's had to call 211. When the girls were a year and a half old, her apartment building burned to the ground. Um, she called me at 3 o'clock in the morning and I said, Julie, get on the phone with 211. She's up in Michigan. Thankfully, 211 is all across the United States, so they've got local offices, local CRAs all over the place. They were help her, able to help her figure out how to get in touch with the Red Cross, how to get into temporary housing, how to do things like that. Fast forward two years, she would die, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, again, single mom, two little girls, really running on a very small budget, um, has a lot of personal issues herself, and we were able to connect her to a lot of resources through 211, so it was great to see that happen. Fast forward today, to today, sorry, and with the pandemic, all of the resources changing, um, she's worked really hard to provide more for her girls, but because of that, she is just at the level where with the changes in the pandemic benefits going away, she's kind of fallen off that COVID cliff and um, lost her SNAP benefits, lost her childcare benefits, and makes $18 an hour with two little girls and a 
deadbeat father, and I'll say that to anyone who asks. Um, so 211 for her is a really, really critical resource as well. So from my own personal experience, seeing how it's been able to help my sister in Michigan when I can't always get up to her to help her out, it does make a difference. I mean, we help as we can, but I'm one person in my family, and I can only do so much. I've got three of my own kids, two in college, so, you know. I can only do so much. Um, but seeing how 211 also helped during the pandemic, helped during the water crisis when the algae bloom was happening, helping people in crisis and large scale situations in our community when there's an emergency need, it's there. But also understanding that 211, and it's why UTMC decided to sponsor this event and sponsor 211, is that we know it's helping our patients real time. A lot of our patients need that extra help. They're going home to situations where they don't have food, they don't have family to help, they might be looking at being evicted. There's so many different things that are happening with our patients, but also with our students, right? Our students, it's a great resource, our staff, and obviously, you know, speaking from my own story, it's for our families and our friends as well. So I just can't thank United Way and 211 en enough. Thank you to the 211 Community Resource Advisors. I know that you've been a shining light for my sister more than once, as you heard. Um, I have no hesitation to tell people to call when they have a need. So thank you for everything that you do, and thank you for the opportunity to help support what you guys are doing. Thank you, Jen, and thank you for your commitment to community. For several years now, you've just been an amazing person and made a huge difference, and we appreciate that. All right, now we're going to hear from our next uh, friend, former fire chief Brian Bird, uh, current United Way board member. And uh, Chief Bird was, you know, as we were thinking about bringing it back and that sort of thing, he really encouraged us to do so, has been a great thought leader, and we have some things in the future that we want to work on together so that we can make 211 an even more accessible resource for folks. But most importantly, we want to figure out how to work with our first responders and, and really alleviate the strain they've been under. So we appreciate your commitment to this work. Good morning. Uh, as Wendy was saying, the fire department got involved with this collaboration with United Way and Councilwoman Sandy Spang because our resources were truly being strained. And we needed to do something to address the disproportionate number of calls that 911 was receiving for people who had emergencies, but they weren't necessarily the type of emergency that necessitated a 911 call. We would have people call 911 because this is literal, because they did not have food, they wanted a ride to the hospital, and some of the people even knew what the menus were on certain days at the hospital. Because they didn't have a prescription but they knew if they got an ambulance ride to the hospital, they could be connected to prescription services through a social worker at the hospital. We would even have a community homeless shelter workers call 911 because they had a resident with a need that they didn't know who else to call. This put uh, an unbelievable strain on our ability to respond to acute medical emergencies and even fires because if a rig is out of service for something that was a long-term resource need for someone because there was really no way for them to get that need met we would have rigs out of service and then someone literally a few blocks away who's having a heart attack where the emergency response took a little longer than what it should have taken because someone was trying to get somebody a pres to the hospital so they could get a prescription. A long-term need that had never been met. So I want to thank Wendy and, and our CRAs especially. I want to give a round of applause for the CRAs again because uh, I've had people call me after that they've had conversations with you. So they really appreciate what you do more than you know. We're all fingers on the same hand. We all have our different role as a finger. 
and 211 is, is a primary finger on that hand because we're all here for one reason and that's we, we have a passion for serving the community because we understand the needs that they have because we see it. So thank you all for being a finger on that hand. We gotta keep clapping and keep the momentum going, so thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that insight. And I like that finger on the hand. Maybe it's the thumb, like what helps grip and get the resources pulled in. So thank you so much. Now, we're going to hear from Council Member Nick Comives. And one of the stories I love about uh, Mr. Comives is he had been working at United Way with Jen Archer. And he saw firsthand at when to, registering at 211 when these families were getting meals. And he was out there with Jen helping folks be in touch with this resource and that sort of thing. I think it's interesting to see that. The power of that experience, I think, grew into his council member leadership in helping us secure funding for 211. Just so you know, we are one of two states here in Ohio. Out of the 50 states, there are two that do not fund 211, and Ohio is one of them. So finding other resources is essential. And I appreciate you as a council member seeing that and understanding it. But you had that very visceral experience. You saw it firsthand and how it helped people. So we thought it would be great for you all to hear from council member Nick Comives today and talk a little bit about his experience with 211. Thanks. Thanks so much, Wendy. And uh, you stole a couple of my talking points already. Um, but I'll repeat them anyways. And I know you'd rather steal my purple shoes, but you can't have those either. So uh, as Wendy mentioned, I was really um, happy. I actually started by just volunteering every day and just showing up. I was bored at home, went from uh, coming to events like this all the time to not having much to do. And so I just started going to United Way and packing meal kits with Jennifer. And I just, I love you. I'm so happy to see you and so happy to see you doing so well. And um, it was such a great experience seeing the number of people that would come through United Way every day to make sure that kids, especially in our community, had access to food, food that they wouldn't otherwise get if they weren't going to school um, in many cases. And so it was really important that we had this service. We also noticed that many of the kids that were coming through didn't have access to the internet, and most of them had to engage in their education uh, online. And so there were many things that illuminated uh, my, uh, my senses during that time um, you know be, and, and especially because I get so many calls we all get so many calls Tiffany can attest to this I see uh, former council member Tiffany Whitman in the audience and and we get so many calls calls from uh, People asking us ta uh, tax questions to those pesky groundhogs in their in their backyards, uh, to property line disputes with their neighbors, uh, to those darn roads that force all of us to bob and weave on your way here. Um, um, but I also hear from people who are facing issues uh, because of uh, potential eviction, food insecurity, internet connection, and many more functions that are not something that the city of Toledo does. And so every time I feel confident that I can send them to 211 because I know that the the folks who are on the other line are able to answer their questions and provide them the support, not just the, the actual resources, but compassion and care and understanding um, that is necessary that I would hope that we would all uh, receive and deserve when we're in our time of need. Um, I remember specifically a time uh, during the pandemic when um, right after evictions started again and there was someone who contacted me and and said Nick I don't know what to do we have an orange notice on our door and I was able to connect them with 211 who um, you know they only have a couple of days once that that orange notice goes on their door to get out of their apartment and um, 211 I think helped them get boxes uh, find a place to get boxes gave them recommendations helped them find some movers for free I believe so just really incredible experience to, to make sure that somebody who's already facing something um, really tragic and, and traumatic. They had children, right? It's traumatic to their children. Um, that way they could at least leave with some dignity um, as they were moving on with their life. So I'm grateful to 211 and the connection that we have. And the connection is really unique with the city of Toledo um, and quite strong, I'm happy to report. Uh, we share in data 
that really helps us to inform the decisions that we make on council, that the city's administration is making related to what services that the city is providing and policy decisions that we're making. Um, it also helps us to apply for grants. I don't know if you've heard, but recently the city of Toledo received over $50 million in a raise grant that's going to transform the uptown neighborhood and the junction neighborhood. Um, and a lot of that was supplemented by data that you as two-on-one call takers are receiving every day. Um, and then you have amazing people that are also compiling all that data and, and trying to tell a story with it. And it helps us to make sure that we can receive funding that's really vital to help carry our city uh, you know, as, as we continue to grow. Um, because of this relationship, I've been proud to sponsor twice now uh, a funding mechanism to provide some funding to two on one um, which I think is really important. There are over 72,000 calls that come into two on one every year. The city of Toledo receives well over 120,000 calls a year into our engaged Toledo call center um, and uh, it's you know, not everything that the city of Toledo gets calls for we can handle, and so we often shift uh, and send those folks to two on one. So we're well aware of the impact that two on one has on this on our residents, and we're happy to provide that funding. I think the last time that we did, we um, provide we're now providing funding over three years, a, a steady amount, which is going to help support and make sure that two on one can continue uh, to provide those vital services to our community. Um, but like Wendy mentioned, we're, we happen to be one of only two. We live in one of only two states in the entire country that doesn't provide funding at the state level for 211. So my ask of all of you this morning is to, I suppose I should say first, give to United Way of Greater Toledo 211. Um, <laughs> And also, if you come into contact with any of your state lawmakers or you happen to have a few minutes of spare time and you want to email them, tell them to fund 211. It's important to our community. So please take the time to do that. Continue to advocate for the great work that, the, the, that United Way is doing. Um, and I really appreciate that you took the time this morning to come out as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Comives. And if nothing else, vote for the man because he has great taste in shoes. We love the purple <laughs> shoes. So now we're going to hear from Corby, Colby Bazell. Now, you can imagine, this is, a, this is one of our community resource advisors. This is one of the folks on the ground. I think this person has the story you're going to want to hear about more than anything. And uh, Colby, thank you, because we know that this is hard work. Um, and I'm going to say something that may be Sometimes the resources aren't there, right? We, we run out of money on certain projects and things. And you're trying to creatively think through that too. It's not your fault it's not there, but, and it's not the person on the phone, it's not their fault. But how you get there, and we know that that's hard work and sometimes pretty emotional. So we hope you have fun and we hope the celebration, we just want you to know how much it means to us that you do this every day. So thank you so much, Colby. Thank you. Hi, my name is Colby. I'm so glad to be here. I've been with United Way 2 on 1 since February 28th, 2022, so almost two full years. I began as a PRC call taker. That was a program, a COVID-funded grant program for families in Lucas County affected by the pandemic. And I took calls for tax prep, scheduling appointments for people in Wood, Lucas, and Ottawa counties, which we're still doing right now as I speak. After tax season, I was promoted to a full-time community resource advisor position to assist with all types of calls. My experience here helping the community has been exactly how I dreamed it would be and more. Working with the public can be, you know, have its ups and downs, as some of you may know, but I leave a call knowing I made a small difference, even if it's just listening to someone talk. One of my amazing coworkers once said, even if we may not be able to find the resources for the caller, our database team has done the research to see if they currently exist within the community. We save the person the time and effort looking for that answer, even if the resources are not available at the time. In addition to 2 on work, 2 on one I work for the Board of Elections, and in the evening on the weekends, I uh, volunteer for a food pantry. Through both spaces, 2 on one has become a phone number that I use regularly for all kinds of situations. At the food pantry, I used to receive calls, emails, and Facebook messages from numerous folks needing transportation to access food. The need seemed insurmountable to tackle on my own, so I had to say no, and many of them slipped through the cracks to me. 
However, one day, Emily, my lovely boss, told us we, we would be able to start taking calls for folks who need rides to access food. Partnered with Lyft, this new program is called the Ride United Transportation Access. Soon enough, I talked to someone at the pantry who, who called 2 for a Lyft ride to us, and I got to see the program in action. The gentleman was so grateful, and I even got to say hi to my coworker who scheduled the ride for him. Needless to say, I formed a deeper connection with the client at the pantry, and I got to understand and experience the program from the other side of the line. Another important way that the Ride United Lift program has alleviated service gaps in the area by connecting the two counties here, Wood and Lucas Counties. Being someone who lives and works in Wood County, I know how important it is to be able to access the plethora of resources in Lucas County. For example, Lucas is fortunate enough to have the YWCA, an agency that assists people who have survived violence in many different forms. Their shelter is one of the ways they help people escape their abusive life at home. An obstacle many survivors of domestic violence uh, face is that even in a shelter, they still live within close proximity of their abuser. The cocoon is the Wood County equivalent of the YWCA, and with a 30-minute drive between the two shelters, it can be a lot safer for Lucas County residents to go to the cocoon and vice versa. I specifically remember an instance before this program began when a caller had informed me that she could not make it from Toledo to Bowling Green. I called the cocoon and they told me that even though there was a bed open for her, they weren't sure if they could get her a ride there. I can tell you that this story has a happy ending. They did an assessment, she got a ride and they stayed, she stayed in that shelter that night. Now, with the Ride United Lift program, I can tell survivors and shelters with certainty that they will get there safely. And more recently, we were even able to get callers to warming centers during that cold stretch last month. The Ride United Lift program has been amazing in many, many ways. And I will say that it does not cover all the bases of needs in our community. Circling back to food insecurity, there are folks who just don't have a vehicle and Lyft works perfectly in that scenario. What it does not cover, however, is getting food to those who cannot get into a car and travel at all. That is where our new program gets its roots, the last mile delivery with DoorDash. In uh, December 2023, 211 has been part partnered with Brown Bag Food Pantry uh, in Bowling Green and uh, Greater Grace Christian Church in Toledo. They uh, give free food deliveries to people without access to, to transportation. This program opens doors for people with transportation limitation, of course, and physical barriers. In December alone, we just delivered 20 Christmas meals to Wood County residents. Since fully launching the program in January, we have scheduled almost 100 deliveries from both pantries, reaching about 25 recipients per week. We now have our eyes on Ottawa and Seneca counties to ensure callers from our full service area have food access. It has been a tremendous program so far, and I'm excited to see how many people will benefit. Seeing these programs come to life and acclimate to the community's needs has been a great joy and a fascination for me. As someone who is passionate about human justice, I often think about the times we don't have the answers. We call those unmet needs. Although I can't document unmet needs while I'm at the work, uh, work of, at the Board of Elections, I would say the most common one I see there is the need to get people to and from the polls. Of course, we have absentee ballot applications as an option here in the state of Ohio, but I hope someday we can expand the Ride United Lift program to mobilize people to vote. One of our goals is to partner with community agencies to fulfill those unmet needs, and there's a recent story from Wood County that embodies this sentiment beautifully. Around Halloween, 211 was, was receiving many calls for costumes, and we recorded it as an unmet need, but a local educational group heard that news and stepped up to collect about 100 costumes for families in the area. It was great to see partnership, engagement, and a response to local needs. Sometimes, though, we have to get creative when talking to callers, and I experienced this myself when the tornado hit Point Place on June 15th of last year. 
I often work Saturday mornings, so just two days after the disaster hit, I was taking calls before heading to the pantry. I gave food to folks I helped on the phone earlier that day, and it was gratifying to see the full circle of assistance. The next day, my marvelous boss, Nautica, gave me supplies to a table set up at a gathering of food trucks, giving meals away for free in Point Place. My main job was to offer resources from the database to those affected by the tornado, but I also gave away bread donated by the pantry. Another organization walked by and asked me if I was willing to give away bottles of water too. The two-on-one table became the hub, a radio web of resources stretching to the community around me, and it felt so tangible in that moment. We were even able to use the lift rides to give them, get them there for food and to the library and job and family services to fill out their applications for disaster related assistance. The best part is when the, an older woman asked me if she knew of any agencies donating generators since her electricity had been out for days. Funnily enough, my boyfriend, who was generously fixing generators for the Point Place uh, residents, received a donated generator just moments after my interaction with this woman. I mean, the timing was too perfect not to mention to her. Another coworker of mine living in the area at the time also went above and beyond, helping her neighbors with tree removal and yard cleanup. These are just some of the ways we, as members of the community, show up for each other. All in all, working for Two on One United Way has been a dream come true to see, hear, and experience how we are able to connect to the caring power of people. I hope these stories warm your hearts as much as it does mine. We are here, we are locals, and we are passionate about what we do for this region. Thank you. Thank you, Colby. That's amazing. I love it. It's that dot connection that you're doing. That's fantastic when it comes to resources and opportunities. Um, and they were acknowledged as they, they won some awards for their response in Point Place and what they were able to do. So really appreciate that. That's the funny thing about 2-1-1 and United Way. Sometimes it's an emergency that causes you to run into action and do what you need to do. And then there's also the day-to-day -day emergencies and in individual families' lives that we're a part of. So it's very exciting to see and meet the folks who do this work and, and really make some Something happen. Okay, so I started off with a car metaphor for a reason. You got a sense of it with Ride United and, and some of the work that's being done there. We know that's a huge unmet need sometimes when folks are calling in. So I um, want to thank, first of all, Yark Automotive because they have been a tremendous sponsor of Ride United and we really appreciate their commitment to that. For example, Ride United, in, injured individuals getting to a doctor's appointment. We've had three different women use Ride United to go to the hospital and have their baby. Um, we've We've had one woman ask for a shelter away from, we've had a, actually more than one. We have the, the domestic violence situation is one that is pretty imperative that we get folks put places safely. So that comes up. Um, all sorts of things. Getting to a job. You know, we'd like to grow Ride United into the kind of program that makes even more folks uh, get where they need to be safely and feeling comfortable and like, you know, it's dignity, right? There's something very dignified about that. So that being said, today you can make a gift to Ride United and we actually have between Ride United or we have a DoorDash opportunity. We are going to see $3,500 of a matching grant to our DoorDash work and it was, or to, excuse me, to our um, sorry, what's the ride? Why am I ride? We've got Ride United and what's last mile, right? Thank you. Last mile program. Giving to these programs, again, ensuring that some of these resources get to folks for $21.10. You can get one ride in the door for somebody. You can commit to doing this monthly. You could look at maybe donating, and, and then we can get that match from DoorDash and get that food to folks. I always go to have seniors. We got a lot of seniors taking care of grandchildren in our community. It's extremely hard for them to get the food. Transportation around food is a big issue. So these two programs are essential. So went back to the car metaphor. You can go ahead and scan. It's right up there. It's on your table tent there. So please consider giving a gift. Also consider thanking our CRAs. After meeting Colby, I think you have a sense of how wonderful they are and, and can thank them explicitly. Now, I said the car's a Lamborghini now. We're going to drive it like we stole it. we got a few things in the future we want to talk about. 
Now, with our 211 program, we started doing 211 to you at the libraries just to test what this would look like. Really grateful to the CRAs for getting in the libraries and, and being there for folks. We do have folks, you know, we have women that are victims of domestic violence and human trafficking. They don't have a phone. They don't know how to get in touch with resources. So it's really nice when that person's right in front of them and they can very discreetly ask for help. We are going into the metro parks. We're very excited about that on the east side of, across from the Glass City Pavilion there. And, and that that, by the way, there is a training there that will be available next week. We really want you to be aware of that if you would like some 211 training. But our Metro Parks partners are huge. The libraries are huge. UTMC, we want to look at your continuum of care. How can 211 be beneficial to UTMC patients explicitly? We're examining that. We're talking about food security with UTMC. Where can we go? Um, I think, too, with City Council, we have just started to look at how we can measure data, how their investment in our 211 can make a difference in our community. So thank you to our elected officials, officials who help us with that. And then Chief Bird and I have been kicking around the idea of what if we did 211 for teens, a specialized training going through our schools and helping teenagers understand the value of 211. One of the things we find, and I think there was one day during the pandemic, more than 20% of the calls coming in were kids under the age of 18 that needed help finding food. This comes up a lot more than you would think. Maybe if we train teenagers about 211, how to use it, when to use it, hopefully they might want to grow up and be CRAs someday. But um, that's, that's a program we want to initiate here in the coming months. So again, if you have ideas about 211 and things you're a part of a community or a place where this can be beneficial information, feel free to be in touch. We want you to be advocating for 211, donating to 211, of course, but also knowing that it's there for friends and family in those more discreet moments. Thank you for your time, your energy, your commitment. And one more time, applaud our CRAs. And thank you for being such a tremendous gift to our community. And thank you for being here.